Hey, what's up? My name is Evan Schneider. I'm actually working on a real project with a client who is editing in Premiere Pro, but sending me the files for me to color in DaVinci Resolve. We don't have a lot of time to send a drive back and forth, but I would prefer to color the raw original camera files instead of a ProRes 444 source. If you've ever wanted to edit your project in Premiere Pro, but color grade in DaVinci Resolve, this video outlines a really good workflow you can use really easily. I will admit it, this is definitely an extremely unique scenario that I'm describing. Even if you're not specifically doing this workflow or needing an answer to this, I would still recommend watching the video because there's tips and information that you might find useful in other projects. Even though I go into some pretty good detail, there is still things that I didn't mention, mixed frame rates, speed changes, framing changes, stuff like that, that I don't cover in this video. But if you would like to see an even more in-depth video, let me know as you're watching the video, make sure you add any questions you have in the comments, and I will definitely try to answer as many as I can. In this project, I've just kind of created kind of a sample timeline, you know, basic workflow of what you might see. So in one timeline, I have all of my clips, all of my footage. And then in another timeline, I have my edit V1. And let's just pretend that the client liked the edit and we're done with V1. V1 is the final version and we're ready to send it to the colorist, which is me. What we wanna do is we wanna send all of the raw files from these clips, but we just wanna send the camera original files. So oftentimes these days you'll edit with the raw clips from the camera. And if your computer can handle it, you'll just edit the raw clips. If your computer can't handle it, you'll usually create proxies. And so one way to do that is to just select all the clips, right click proxy, and then create proxies, which I've already done this, but I've created H.264 low resolution proxies and I've added a watermark. So once you do that, it'll automatically connect the proxies to the footage. And if you click on this little button right here, toggle proxies, if you don't see it, you can actually click on the button editor and drag it down. Um, and the reason I add the watermark is because it adds this little icon, which lets me know that this is the proxy version. And if I turn this off, then I can clearly see this is the full resolution camera original file. So that's proxy, that's off. So right now, if I'm editing with the proxies, it's super smooth and it's a great way to do things. However, I don't want to include the proxies because the colorist doesn't need those. So basically what I want to do is send just these files that are used in the timeline, which I have not used all of the clips. I've only used these clips, so it doesn't have everything. So you could send everything, but it's going to take a long time to upload and it's just faster to do it this way. If you wanted to do it manually, you could just right click, reveal in Finder, and then you would find that and you copy it to a folder and then do that for every single thing in the timeline. But nobody has time for that. So what you want to do is go up to file, project manager, and then in the project manager is where you can determine which files you want to copy. You can basically consolidate a timeline. So up here, um, I have my edit V1. That's my final edit. I have it selected. Um, I'm not going to select all clips because that has everything. I'm just going to select the timeline that I want to send. Then I'm going to make sure collect files and copy to new location is selected. This will basically collect all the files in the timeline and copy them to the location, the destination path that I add. Right now, I'm just going to do it to the desktop to show you. Um, if you have consolidate and transcode selected, that means it's going to transcode the files to a different format. For this purpose, you really don't want to do that. That might be more for an archival purpose. Um, so I'm just going to collect files, copy to new location, and then you really want to make sure exclude unused clips is selected because we only want it to copy these files. If this is not selected, it'll copy everything in the project. So we want to exclude unused clips, include audio conform files. Sure, that's not going to be huge files, um, but you technically don't need it if you're sending it to a colorist. Include preview files, 
And then you want to deselect rename media files to match clip names. If you're exporting an XML from here, you might actually want to check this because then the XML will match the clip name. If you haven't renamed any of these, which I highly suggest that you do not rename any of these files anyways, um, you want to make sure to uncheck this because the goal is for the XML to match the file names um, because then it'll import into Resolve without any problems. So now that I've done this, I can calculate the project size. And so the original project size is 18.57 gigabytes, which makes sense because my resulting project size is going to be 12.15 gigabytes. Um, which shows me that it is in fact only using these clips that I have in the timeline um, because I haven't used all of the clips. So this makes sense. If I selected all clips and edit V1 is unselected, calculate again, then it's going to match original project 18.57, resulting 18.47. And that's because I have just like some audio clips and songs that I've drug in. So if I uncheck exclude unused clips, do that again, now it matches the original project size. So now I know anything in the project bin is going to be copied over in this consolidate to the desktop folder. So I'm going to exclude unused clips, do edit V1, and then do that. And we're good to go, right? Well, actually, there's a little weird thing in Premiere that it will actually copy if I've created proxies and attached them, um, which I've actually done this once before. So if I go to my desktop, here's a consolidate that I've done with these exact settings. It has actually copied the proxy media for these clips. So this is the full resolution media, and then this is the proxy media. And it's actually copied proxy media that wasn't even included in this timeline. It's just selected every single proxy media that there is. We do not want it to collect the proxy media. So we actually have to cancel out of this and you want to make sure your entire project is finished. Um, and you could even duplicate the project if you wanted to, um, because this is kind of an annoying workaround. All you want to do is select all of the clips in your project folder right click, go to proxy, and you want to detach proxies. So once I do that, we can see here that the proxy watermark has disappeared and the little icon on our clips is gone. So we know that our proxies are not attached anymore. So now let's go back to project manager. We got everything selected. Let's calculate. All right. So now Let's try and see what happens. I'm just going to delete this folder and hit OK. Save the project, sure. All right, so now it's finished. Let's go to the desktop, copy, consolidate, and there we go. We have all of the clips that we used in this timeline, um, and it's actually created a new Premiere project with the consolidated media already attached. So if we open this project, let's close, close project. Okay, so now we have edit V1 and we have only the media we used. So technically we don't really need this, but it's kind of nice that it's already attached. From here, what you can do is just go to file, export, Final Cut Pro XML. Just save it to this folder, Final Cut Pro XML. This is what I'm going to import into Resolve. And now we have an XML of this timeline um, in the folder. And so now I can bring this into Resolve and Resolve will read this and it'll take these clips. Um, let's just do it, why not? Let's open Resolve. All right, so in Resolve, we will go to the media pool. And since I'm working on the same computer, I don't need to drag the clips into the media pool first. All I have to do is go to import timeline, copy, consolidate, edit V1, open. 
And then I'm going to automatically set project settings based on the XML settings, automatically import source clips into media pool. Yes, we want to do that and use sizing information. I didn't resize any of the clips, but you can keep that selected if you want. Mixed frame rate format, I usually leave on Final Cut Pro 7 and hit OK. And now let's see if that worked properly. Looks like it did. So we have all of our media. So it does this weird thing with the audio where these are all mono tracks and in Premiere, um, these are, you know, single tracks, but they're stereo tracks. So it's actually imported duplicates as mono tracks. So we're really more paying attention to the video side of things. Um, so one thing that you might want to do is just go back to Premiere and export um, just a WAV file from your audio um, if it really makes that big of a difference. Um, so I would just go turn video off and change your format, waveform audio, and then go to your audio, make sure it's 24 bit, whatever you want, you know? I'm not really an audio guy, but these are the settings I use. These are, you know, this is lossless audio. So you can export your audio from there and then import that into your DaVinci project and then just delete all this, set that, and then now, you have everything ready for coloring and get started on grading all of this footage. And yeah, you can just do whatever you want, basically. So once you finish with this, once you finish coloring and everything, um, you have the option. If you're trying to do a round trip workflow, you can either export this and then import it into Premiere, just like as a ProRes, or you can export individual clips um, like this, um, or there's actually Premiere XML. I think that should export the video and audio. Maybe I'll cover that in another video, how to do a round trip back to Premiere, but typically I just color it and then finish it in Resolve and then export the master from Resolve. So I hope this video is helpful. I sell color grading LUTs on my website called LUTCO. And we also just released a DaVinci Resolve super eight millimeter preset featuring real super eight millimeter assets that we scanned. So make sure to go check those out. And thanks so much for watching.